Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so honored and delightful and thankful, Lord. We're able to come in your presence and hear your word. And Father God, we pray for our nation today. We give you all the praise and glory that each one of our leaders hearken unto you. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world that every nation has the gospel preached as a witness then that you come. Thank you, Lord, for sending the labors to every person's life to tell them about Jesus. And Lord, we pray for all those missionaries out there, for all the body of Christ, that we go forth and do exploits in Jesus' name. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today, that I'm say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. Now pray for all of us, Lord, as we hear your word, and hear from the Holy Ghost, we'll go forth and become doers of your word, led by Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's turn our Bibles over to the book of Isaiah, and we'll start here in Isaiah chapter 53, and read these scriptures here pertaining to divine healing. Now, verse 4 and 5 says here, surely, don't mind what Jesus is going to do when he came. Of course, he's king. But the scripture said, surely it borne our griefs, that's also sicknesses, and carried our sorrows, that's also word pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, that chastised our peace upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now let's go to the book of Matthew, please, in Matthew chapter 8. Now the scripture says here, in verse 16 and 17, When need was come, they brought unto him, many was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick. That it might be filled with spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities, and bear our sicknesses. And then let's go over to 1 Peter, please. In 1 Peter chapter 2, the scripture says here in verse 24, Who his own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unrighteous, by whose stripes ye were healed. Notice here the Holy Spirit puts our healing in the past tense now. Because by this time, Jesus already came, gave his life, died, was raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of God the Father. So he paid for our redemption. He delivered us, he redeemed us from the curse of the law by him giving his life. He was crucified. Remember Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath, we say has, redeemed us the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us, for his written curse is everybody on the tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Now Jesus did this for us. And not only that, but God transferred those blessings that belonged to Abraham in the Old Covenant over in the New Covenant. So they belong to us as believers once we receive Jesus Christ, the Lord. And we're to go forth in this life, enjoying life, ruling and reigning in Christ, living in abundance. Because Jesus came, that we might have life and have abundance. And God wished above all things that we prosper. He said so. And be in health. How do we know? He said so. Even as our soul prospers. And we need to realize that every day of our life, God wants us to enjoy the life he gave us. We can do that, first of all, by resisting anything but come to challenge that joy or that peace. We're going to do that, but first of all, remind ourselves, now wait a minute, this, the word says, and remind us what Jesus did for us, and then decreeing, the, declaring that about ourselves. Begin to say what the word says, that the peace of God, which pastor understand it, shall keep our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Now that always gets challenged by the enemy, who's Satan, who's Lucifer, the devil who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're to resist him in Jesus' name. Resist those evil thoughts and resist those feelings of depression and worry and fear, knowing that in Jesus' name, I've been delivered. Remember Jesus said there in the Gospel of John, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And it's just good to say that to things. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. And decreeing, declaring, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. And rejoicing in that, knowing that this is what God promised his word. This is what he said he wants me to have. And we know that the word of God says he renews our youth like the eagles. Well, every day of our life, we need to expect to be renewed. And decree and declare what the word of God says about us, that we have the mind of Christ, that we can do all things through Christ. Remember, Caleb said, I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago. Think about this. He's decreeing and declaring. And the psalmist said in Psalm 130, verse 6, In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. We're going to need those scriptures like that more every day of our life. You know, the things of the world always change. But we're to always live in abundance and live in divine protection as believers and divine health. There's great benefits that belong to us in Christ Jesus. Remember the psalmist said, And forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life destruction, who crowneth thee love and kindness and tender mercy, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And just talking that way, based on God's word. It's not because we've achieved something in our life, and thank God for those achievements, but we give God all the glory and all the credit. No, what Jesus achieved for us, through what he did, 
that he bought our salvation. He redeemed us from the curse of law. And everything that has to do with the curse, we've been redeemed from it. Sickness, disease, poverty, lack. Jesus redeemed us. God placed all that that was in this world upon Jesus Christ when he was crucified. What we want to do is, is gain a knowledge of that and then expect, accept it and receive it. Receive it, all that Jesus did for us. Not resisting it. You know, sometimes when you're talking to a believer, you begin to share with them about prosperity or healing, or what, and they begin to rebuttal it. Oh, that can't be, you know. God doesn't have those things. I mean, when your bottom line, or that passed away, or that was just for the Jewish people. I mean, every time, he, whenever, it used to be when I first got saved, I'd get some material blessing, uh, scripture, like 3 John verse 2, or Galatians 3, 13, 14, 29. Share it with some other Christian. Born again, spirit-filled person. Now, that was just for the Jewish people. I mean, when it came to any material, physical blessing, it was always for someone else. No, that belongs to us as believers. We don't want to reject that. We want to receive it. God will be to us all that we believe him for. And so often we limited God by not accepting what Jesus did for us. Not necessarily in those terms or we talk that way, but by us saying, ah, you know, I don't know if about that. I don't know if I believe that way or not. Well, is it scriptural? Is it a promise? Is it a fact that Jesus did for us? Then that's what we receive. It may be contrary to what we've always thought or what we've always believed. But what we're going to do is change our belief to the word to the promise of God, and say, Father God, this is what your word says about me. That's how Mary became pregnant. She said, according to your word, been on me. I mean, she hasn't been with a man. How's this ever going to happen? The angel let her know the Holy Spirit's going to come over, and she's going to con over, and she's going to conceive. And when the Holy Spirit came upon her, she did. But later on, when, they, when she's at that wedding, and there were, they ran out of wine, she, what'd she say? Whatever he says to do, do it. And she said, take the pots and fill them with water. And they filled them to the brim. They said, go draw the governor of the feast. And they did. And the governor of the feast tasted that wine and said, this is the best wine. You saved the best for last. Well, now, how did those miracles take place? Mary agreed with what the word of God said. And she got other people to do what Jesus said, which is doing the word. Remember there in Proverbs, we've read before, in Proverbs 4, verse 20, my son, that means mankind, people, my son, attend to my words. Incline there my saints. Let them not depart in eyes. Keep them in the heart. Now, here's the benefit. For their life, his words, God's words, their life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Every day, we want to seek God and spend time in the Word and find out what Jesus did for us and remind ourselves, this is what Jesus did for me. This is what Jesus bought and paid for and freely gave to me. Knowing that from God's Word, that I'm everything his Word says I can do. I have everything his Word says I can do. Say that by faith. I mean, if we can decree and clear we're born again, that we're saved, and we only have the proof we have, is God's word a tangible proof that we'd show someone else? Is God's word. Now, we know the Holy Spirit bears with in our spirit, but we couldn't prove that to someone else that wasn't saved. So what we do is we'd show that from the word of God. This is what God's word said. There was a lady who was coming to my services, and uh, she recently had, re had re re uh, gotten saved, her and her family, and husband and two children. And so she's coming every week faithfully and following along the word of God as I taught. What she would decide... And she was going to go to this Christian uh, uh, conference they were having. I think it was out in um, Denver. So she was going out there, and she lived in Connecticut. And so she got all ready for that. You know, it's time for the to flight to go. So she went to the airport, got on the flight. I think they're going to fly out of Bradley and then go to Jersey and pick up another flight and then go the rest of the flight. Well, anyway, so she gets on board the plane, and there's three you know seats there, and she sits on the aisle. And, and there was... a. Uh, um, you know, the other, the other two seats are empty here. Well, here comes a man eventually who got on, and he was a, an attorney. And another person, when they landed in, in Jersey or wherever they picked up the flight, they picked up New, Newark, they picked up the other person, the third person. So now the road's all full. Now, as soon as he sat down, he started, opened up his briefcase, started working on some projects he had there, apparently had to get done, or was, you know, taking, up, uh, taking advantage of the time. Well, anyway, the lady I'm talking about that came to my service, she said to him, are you a Christian? Are you born again? No, lady, I'm an attorney. She goes, oh, boy, kind of shut her down, you know. So, anyway, they pick up this third person on that next leg. So they sat down, and she said, uh, reaching across the lawyer, are you a Christian? Are you born again? Are you saved? Yes, I am. Oh, are you going to the convention? She's kind of just like a puppy dog, real excited. I guess must have thought everybody on her plane is going to a convention she's going to. But the guy said, uh, no, I'm not going to the convention. I'm going out to see my father. He's dying with a disease. 
Oh, she says, you're going to go pray for him for his healing, huh? He, he said, no. You know, God doesn't do that. Well, she opened up her Bible and, and read a healing scripture to him, like Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He said, yeah, but that doesn't mean that. And then she read some scripture like Matthew 8, 17. I know exactly what she did, but she did that one. And then she did 1 Peter 2, 20. Now, this goes back and forth. Now, the lawyer's sitting between these two born again Christians, the whole flight, listen to them, go back and forth. The other person next to the, the man that's going out to see his father, he never had any scripture. He just kept talking about what he believed and what he thought. And what about so-and-so? What about this person? So finally, the planes come into place where it's going to land. And they're telling everybody, you know, to put away their stuff. So the lawyer put all his paperwork back together, snapped his briefcase lid together, and said, she won. Now, he's been listening to this the whole flight. And they're both looking at each other, you know. The, the man was next to the window, the lady on the aisle that I know. The lawyer said, she won. If you believe that this Bible here is God's word, she proved from the word of God that healing's for your, your dad. You had no scripture from the word of God to show it wasn't for your dad. She won the case. <laughs> thought that was kind of interesting. But you see, now what she had? She had scripture. She had promises, and she used those promises. Now, what Jesus did for us were to receive and, and, be, and, do, and receive it with joyfulness and gladness of heart, knowing that this is what God's word. He says, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. That means we're righteous no matter what we've done or haven't done. He says, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Once we receive Jesus, our Lord and Savior, then that's what we say. We may not feel like we are, may not look like we are, but we are because the word says we are. He says we have the mind of Christ, then we have the mind of Christ. He says we can do all things through Christ, then we can do all things through Christ. He says we're the head and not the tail, then we're the head and not the tail. He says we're blessed, then we're blessed. And he says we're complete, then we're complete. He says we're righteous, then we're righteous. He says we're justified, then we're justified. He says we're sanctified, then we're sanctified. Whatever he says about us, that's what we say about us. Because Jesus is our advocate. He's our lawyer. And you know, if you ever had a lawyer representing you, they'd let you know, now don't you say anything unless I tell you to say it. Or say what I say about yourself or about this case. Well, Jesus represents us. And if we'll just continually speak God's word, then he'll fulfill that. But if we talk negative doubt and unbelief, he can't fulfill that. That's the enemy where he comes in. See, Satan wants to get a hold of our mouth. He wants us to talk contrary to what the word of God says about us. He doesn't want us to believe what Jesus did for us. I mean, he, you know, he told me at the time, I didn't know it was him, that I didn't need to be saved. I didn't need to be born again. I was good enough. I, I was already going to church. Well, then after I did that, then he began to tell me other things that I shouldn't have or shouldn't believe for. But nevertheless, we have to get through all that doubt and belief, unbelief and just keep, keep ourselves fully persuaded. This is what God's word says about me. This is what he says belongs to me. This is what he says I have. And that's what we say. We just continue to agree and declare, this is what God's word says about us. And by doing that, we're siding in with God. We don't want to take sides against God's promises. We want to think, well, you know, if that was the case, everybody would have it. Well, is Jesus the case? Is he the truth? Is salvation for everyone? I mean, there's probably only about 6 billion people in this world that's not born again. Does that mean it's not for everybody? Certainly not. Many people, when they hear the gospel, choose not to, to receive Jesus. So we need to keep praying for them, that their eyes be opened up. Just because people don't receive Jesus doesn't prove that it's not God's will that everybody be saved. God's not willing that any should perish. And when people don't receive healing, doesn't mean that healing is not for everybody, or they don't receive their miracle. doesn't mean miracles aren't for everybody, because they are. We don't base what we believe on people's experiences. We base, base what we believe what Jesus did for us. We need to just focus totally on Jesus. How do we do that? Looking at his promises, what he says we are. Again, if he says we're a new creature in Christ, then we are. That's what we say. That's what we think. That's what we believe. What did Jesus say? then that's what we believe. What did Jesus do for us? Then that's what we believe. What did Jesus redeem us from? He redeemed us from the curse. And his blood has cleansed us from all sins and made us the righteous of God in Christ. And if we side in with what Jesus did for us, instead of taking sides against him, and think, well, now God does know he's healed. God knows what's best. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. What would you think if someone said that about salvation? You've got this sinner you're trying to get born again. You're talking to him about Jesus, reading the scriptures to him about receiving Jesus. Someone else comes along and says, well, now God doesn't always save. He may want this person to live in sin a little longer, teach them something. Why well, no, you rebuttal that. You'd come against that in Jesus' name. And you're going to try to talk to the sinner into acting upon the word of God by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord. And by decreeing and declaring what the word of God says. I was doing a seminar in, in uh, West Haven at the Omni Hotel, <clears throat> excuse me, and I just went to men's room to change real quick, 
and to go in, put my suit on. And there's a man that worked the hotel was in there. And I don't know what he's doing, but he's in the restroom. We, him and I started talking. I don't know if he's cleaned the place or what, but. And I started talking about receiving Jesus. Have you, have you been born again? Have you received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Are you saved? And he began telling me he goes to church and, and what he hasn't done, what he hasn't done. Now I got a few minutes here to quickly get ready to go out there. I got to start teaching. Well, this went on for a little bit and he had his opinion, but I quoted him scriptures. This is what the Bible says. You need to receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Well, finally I said, listen, I need to go do my service. It was good to talk to you. But let me let you know that if you die in this condition, the way you are right now, you're going to go to hell. You have to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. I didn't make up the rules. God only had one son. And the reason Jesus is so important is that Jesus is the only one that took the sins of the world. No one else has ever done that. Now, people have died for people. But Jesus gave his, his blood for the whole world. He gave his life for everyone. Well, now, what happened? What was going on there? And I prayed, you know, kept praying for him, believing God that those words that I spoke to him, actually it was God's words, will not return void. Someone else come along and water the seed. And we would keep praying for people that their eyes be opened up, their heart be opened up to receive Jesus. We don't give up on him. But nevertheless, let's see, what was he doing? He's rejecting it. He had his opinion. Actually, he's lying to himself, but he had his opinion. And see, those are the kind of things I did when people witnessed to me. They talked to me about receiving Jesus. They told me that, you know, you need to receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior. Well, I told them the things that I did that were good. I mean, I'd bring up the bad things. But I told them the good things I did. And what I did this, and I did that. And I go to church, and I do this for the church, and on and on. They just kept talking about Jesus. No matter what I said, how I rebutted it, how I countered it, they kept bringing up Jesus. Well, those words, and read scripture to me, from the Bible, out loud, in front of everyone, you know. And told me, this is what the word says. This is what Jesus did for you. You have to receive Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Or words of this effect. But definitely you have to receive Jesus. Well, now, we parted company. And, you know, for, for weeks after that, in the middle of the night, sometimes I'd wake up. And it seemed like I heard those voices. And I didn't. I didn't have a vision or hear any voices. But my conscience bothered me about receiving Jesus. Finally, I agreed I would receive him. But I didn't know what to do. I'm still by myself. Until someone came to me, invite me to their church. And when I went to their church, they preached about receiving Jesus. And I went forward and received Jesus, my Lord. Well, now, I, maybe those men kept praying for me. I hope they did. Now, you know, hey, it looked like we didn't reach Je Jesse, but we at least told him what the gospel said, what Jesus did. The word doesn't return void. So we plant the seeds as we witness. Who knows? Someone else coming along and water it. Remember, Paul said, I planted a wa uh, Paulus water, but God gave the increase. And see, I just thought it was enough just to go to church. I believed the Bible. I believed in God. I believed in Jesus. I believed in Peter, Paul, and Mary, whoever else, you know. Well, but I had I had received Jesus willfully, wanting to. And that's how we received our salvation. Well, what we want to do is when it comes to healing and speaking in tongues, everything else the Word of God teaches that God wants us to have, then what we want to do is agree with it. Though we may not experience it yet, think, Father God, I think this is what your word says, and I believe according to your word, I am what your word says I am. And receive everything Jesus did for us. And be glad that we can. And know that, Father God, I thank you. This is what your word says in the name of Jesus. And I just give you all the praise. Well, that's what Mary did. That's why she said, according to your word, be done to me. She just wanted to know how it's going to happen because she's never been with a man. And this has never happened this way. And the angel told her if the word of the Lord came to him to tell her. And she agreed with that. How did she get Jesus or those men to do what Jesus said to, or what she wanted them to do? She said, do whatever Jesus said to do to get the water turned to wine in, in John chapter 2. How did this all happen? They did what Jesus said to do. They acted upon what he said to act upon. And by doing so, that's called faith. By going and filling those pot of, pots of water and then go governor the, bear the governor of the feast. By doing that, they got this miracle of water turned into wine. That's how miracles happen in our life. How did the new birth miracle happen in a believer's life? They chose to receive Jesus Christ as Lord by confessing with their mouth and believing in their heart, confessing Jesus as Lord with their mouth, believing in their heart that God's raised the dead. That's how they become saved. Real simple. It doesn't take anything else. The gospel is simple. To add works to it is not the gospel. No, it's Jesus and Jesus only. And when a person receives Jesus as Lord, they have everything else the Father has. And they have access to God 24-7. We can come boldly to the throne of grace, because the Bible teaches us to. Let us therefore come boldly on the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help with time and need. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. And we come that way in Jesus' name. We rejoice that we can. And not, not 
rebuttal the Word of God or reject the Word of God? No, reject all the problems that come, the symptoms that would come, or poverty, lack, or pain, or sickness. No, those are what we want to reject. But receive the engrafted Word by renewing our mind to God's Word, by programming our mind to think in line with God's Word. That may take some time, and we need to kind of constantly refresh our mind with God's Word, but nevertheless, by doing it, we begin to become more established, that we become stronger and more confident that resisting anything would come against us. See, many dear Christians, bless their hearts, yet they're born again, yet they've received Jesus, maybe even baptized the Holy Spirit, but really don't know about who they are in Christ Jesus. Some people are not really interested. They're kind of content about where they're at. But no, we want to keep receiving revelation knowledge from God's Word. And that's what we need. To, that's what, why we need to do this, is because the more we learn about what Jesus did for us, the more we can take authority of the situations that we're confronted with. But as long as we think, well, maybe this problem's from God, well, then we're not going to resist it. When they woke up Jesus in the midst of that storm, in Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 35, when they woke him up and said, Carest thou not to perish, he didn't start thinking, well, maybe the storm came from God. Maybe God's trying to work out something in our life. You know, maybe someone's out of the will of God. You just never know what God would do. Maybe God sent the storm to teach us something. No. Immediately, what did Jesus do? He spoke to the problem. And we do that today with the Word of God in Jesus' name. See, it's dangerous for not us for not to open our mouths to the problem. No, we engage the Word of God by speaking it, by acting upon God's Word. One way we can do that is by speaking God's Word in the name of Jesus. Another way we can stay in faith is constantly praise God and thank God we are what His Word says we are, that we are delivered, we are redeemed, we're healed because the Word of God says you are. You know, Colossians says we, we're we're delivered. Galatians says we're redeemed. First Peter 2, 24 says we're healed. And we take those scriptures from Galatians 3, 13, Colossians 1, 13, 1 Peter 2, 24, and just constantly decree those out of our mouth. The Bible stops to Jesus, I'm healed. I am delivered in Jesus' name. I am forgiven. The Word of God teaches that we are the forgiven, not trying to get forgiven. No, what, what Jesus did, he paid the price, forgave our sins, took our judgment for sin. And that was placed upon Jesus. So we're not going to be judged because we said, did something wrong by God. No, what we need to realize is that we've been forgiven. And the blood of Jesus constantly cleanses them from all sins. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. And as Jesus is, so are we in this world. In 1 John 4, verse 17. That's how God sees us. Now we need to see ourselves that way. There were more than conquerors. We're going forth in this life, ruling and reigning Christ, by decreeing and declaring every day what the Word of God says. And even at night, if you wake up, just begin to praise God and thank God for what the Word of God says about why we're re whatever the reason was you, you were woken up. It could have been fear. It could have been doubt. It could have been unbelief. It's all from the enemy. But instead of just letting it th stay there, no, we resist it. And sometimes some of us didn't do that when we knew we should have. Maybe we forgot or we kind of let it slip. No. We need to constantly remind ourselves if it comes to stealing, kill, and destroy, fear, worry, doubt, and unbelief, oppression, depression, confusion, it has to be resisted. How are we going to resist it? By saying, I refuse you in Jesus' name. Fear, go for me. God's not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power and love to sound mine. Like again, like Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My heart's not troubled, and I'm not afraid. And when it comes to lack of ability, I have favor with God, man, I can do all things through Christ, strength me. When it comes to problems that come against you, God's not giving me spirit of fear, and no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And the more we talk that way, the stronger we become, the more confident we become, the more convinced we become what Jesus did for us and what belongs to us. We begin to see ourselves according to what the Word of God says. Now it takes some work and effort on our part. We're not earning it. But we're just convincing ourselves this is what God says belongs to us. And I thank you, Father God, I can do what your Word says I can do. I have what your Word says I have. I am what your Word says I am. The Word of God says we have the mind of Christ. That's how we talk about our mind. Instead of saying things contrary to that and using negative words about our mind, no, speak God's Word. And knowing that I have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in yours. It's also in Christ Jesus. The scripture said in Philippians chapter 4. And we need to think that way. And we're going to do that by knowing this is what God's word says about me. And just enjoying the benefits. And just standing our ground. How do we do that? By constantly speaking God's word and praising God and thanking God we are what his word says we are. The more we thank God and praise God for what the word says about us. The more we decree and declare what God's word says about us. The more confident we become. And it's so important that we get that way. Not in ourselves. We're not putting that confidence because of what our ability. No, in what Jesus. Our, our ability is limited, but not in Jesus. Because in Jesus, the greater one dwells inside of us, and we can do all things through Christ. 
We're facing an enemy that's been defeated by the Lord Jesus Christ and who's a liar. Satan's a liar. He's been defeated by Jesus. And so technically, we're to tread upon serpents, scorpions over all the power of the enemy because Jesus said so in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Jesus gave his power to tread upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing should be able to hurt us. That means he gave us authority. And we have the authority because we're a believer. Once we receive Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, we have that authority in Jesus' name. And those things, mountains, problems, situations, have to leave, have to move as we stand fast on God's word. Again, how's that? How do we stand fast? Remember the fish said, have you done all stand, stand? Therefore, by holding fast our confession of faith, by constantly having the sword of the Spirit coming out of our mouth against that problem. And just continually say, it's written, Satan, I come against you in Jesus' name, it's written. And if it's healing, himself took my infirmities and bear my sickness, and by straps, I'm healed. If it has to do with financial situations, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God shall supply all of my need, according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. Jesus came, that I might have life, and I'm more abundantly. And I thank you, Father God, you're taking care of all these problems I got. I turn them over to you. I know you don't want me to worry about them. And I thank you, Father God, I decree and declare my business is blessed, and my bills are paid, and my family's blessed in Jesus' name, and our cup runs over financially. And thank God that the windows of heaven open us. See, when we tithe, God promised he'd open the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. That there wouldn't be enough room to contain it. That's how we're to live as a believer. And that he rebuked the fire for our sake. When we speak God's word, God backs his word and Satan has to leave. Thank God for that. Father God, we thank for Jesus. He's our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, you redeemed us, you delivered us, you saved us, and you've blessed us. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure, or maybe you know you've never done it. Today would be your day to receive Jesus. I'm going to read the description, three verses here from Romans chapter 10. Then after I read the description, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me to receive Jesus as the Lord. Now the Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth righteous, with the mouth confession made salvation. Now verse 13, for whosoever calleth him the Lord shall be saved. Think about this. Whoever calls upon the Lord, she'll be saved. Salvation is simple. Jesus did all the work for us. Praise God for that. Pray this after me and mean it, and you receive the Lord. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins to the cross, took my judgment of sin, died, was buried, and God, you're raised the dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me and forgiving me of all my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for keeping me from going to hell when I pass away, in Jesus' name, amen. And you can pray that prayer, good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at justrichministries.com. Or you can write me. You can write down this address if you'd like to. At Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 23-7170, New York, New York, 10023. And say, brothers, I got, I got saved but day when you asked me to receive the Lord. Or you got a prayer request, that's fine too. And you can close that. And also, we have our church on the phone tonight, 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code will be right here on our Facebook page. And I want to encourage you, if you just prayed the prayer to receive Jesus, I want you to start reading your New Testament. Start with the Gospel of John. Find a church to go to that teaches Jesus the only way to heaven. That church and pastor will help you grow and develop spiritually. And get involved with them. Help them out. Build God's kingdom. And, you know, some places church aren't going yet, so then you have to do what you can do to hear God's word. YouTube, Facebook, whatever. be a great help to you. Again, if you have a prayer request, you can contact me at jesserichministry.com. Enjoy being here today. I'm so glad and honored that you watched today. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Money. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.